Good morning. Welcome to our worship experience this morning. Uh, whether you're worshiping with us in person or live via Facebook or YouTube or via conference call, we welcome you uh, one more time into the house of the Lord. Won't you give the Lord one more time a hand clap of praise for everything that he's done for us uh, in and through this week. Uh, normally, if we were gathered in person, we would be is celebrating and highlighting our, our veterans, uh, but due to the pandemic uh, and COVID regulations, we are doing some things uh, quite differently this morning. So this will be a ordinary day of worship. Uh, our children and youth, as usual, will be leading us uh, in our time of devotion and also our time of praise and worship. So we ask right now, wherever you are, whether you're at home or work or driving through the streets of Houston, Wherever you may be listening or viewing from us at this time, we ask that you would join in, that you would block out all distractions, and you would worship with us just as if you were in person. Our youth will come at this time, led by Jeremy Ben and Michael Mims, Jr.
Psalms 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. <clears throat> he leads me through the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for the Lord is with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. My they prepare a table before me, my cup in the presence of my enemies. I'm sorry. <clears throat> my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 Thank you. So everybody, bow your heads, close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we come here this morning thanking you for yet another day. Thank you for watching over us last night as we slumbered and didn't know what was going on around us. Lord, thank you for just allowing us to have the use and activity of our limbs. Some people don't have that right now, Lord, uh, especially due to this time that we're in with the COVID and the pandemic and everything that's going on. It's a lot of people that wanted to get up this morning but just couldn't get up. Uh, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to just get up and allowing us to be able to just do what we do and not take it for granted. It's a lot of things that we might take for granted every day, but Lord, I just come to you right now saying thank you. Thank you for being who you are, almighty God, or all understanding God, or all merciful God, Lord. Lord, I just ask that you put a special blessing upon not just this country, but the whole world. We know that we're all going through the same thing. You put us here for the same thing. We all have a purpose. Lord, I just thank you for every church door that is open this morning in your name, not just us. I thank you for the people that are here today, those that are up here lifting up your voice, those that, are, that just couldn't make it and are watching right now on TV, Lord. I ask that you would just watch over every single person, Lord, even from those who believe and those who don't believe, Lord, because we know that you have the final say of what's going on, Lord. We know that the devil is a liar and he's always busy. Lord, I ask that you would watch over those that are traveling the highways and byways every single day, Lord. Lord, we think that we're in control, but it's always you that in control. Lord, we just thank you for being an all-merciful God. Just thank you, Lord. If I don't say anything else, Lord, I just thank you today, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for just continuing to bless me, Lord. Lord, we know that 2020 has been a rough year, but Lord, you've still been good regardless of what's been happening. Lord, I just ask that you just come in right now and just let us feel your spirit. We know that you're always around. We can't see you, but we know you're here, Lord Jesus. We just I ask you all of this in Jesus name we pray amen we like Daniel said, nothing's going to stop us from praising our God you may be making seated we're going to present our puppet show for our children so we're going to ask our children to come up to the screen and pay attention and, and worship with our puppets this morning Give us a super exciting song. They doing something for God.
jump for Jesus. Never gonna stop praising his name. Come on, let's clap it the Lord one more time, y'all.
never, 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 never,
and thank him again for his goodness, his greatness, and his absolute kindness toward us. When we thank God again for our youth and our children for that demonstration of sharing what the Lord has given them today. We thank God for the band that's here. For everybody else that's present, we certainly praise God uh, for each and every one of you. We're coming up to the preacher hour now. Uh, normally, we would go just go right into it. You would hear from the preacher at this point. Uh, but I think this is more than I want to just kind of pause and introduce our preacher to us who's going to share with us the, the word of God on this particular day. He is a, he's a young man who is actually a byproduct of the, the, uh, the Good Shepherd family. Um, his last name is Williams, so you know that that would be a connection to Velma and Thelma and actually a connection to Reverend Wilson. He was, uh, he's actually the great nephew of the late great Reverend Anazine Wilson. He's a young man that uh, every, I guess we would say, the fourth Sunday of June for many, many years, uh, he wind up being one of the little boys that would come from uh, Louisiana, migrating here, come with his mom, uh, uh, in order that might celebrate the anniversary, uh, great time of the Lord, in the Lord, the anniversary of Reverend Anazine Wilson. And uh, God, again, has uh, allowed him to grow up and mature. He's about 41 years old now. And he's coming away by Lake Charles, Louisiana. He is one of those pastors that um, has had a church to pastor, but now the people are scattered, people are everywhere, and the building that they once worshiped in is no longer fit to worship. And so therefore, um, it has been a while since a person who's used to preaching every Sunday, used to teaching every week, uh, this is really gonna be his first time standing to preach the word of God. Uh, since that initial hurricane uh, that literally wiped out most of Lake Charles. So I would that you would receive today, those of us that are in the building right now, stand on your feet and help me to receive Pastor Cornelius Williams, who is coming to us uh, again just to preach to us the word of God. And I prayed for him in the back, man. I said, I pray you be able to get through your sermon. Uh, just the mere fact that he hadn't preached in that, that, that much of time and then God has given him experiences uh, that he never ever imagined that he was going to have. So I'm saying to us, let's pray for him. Let's pray for the preacher. Uh, it can't be an easy task for him right now. Uh, but the reality is that uh, God has given him people to serve, but he's no longer with those persons that he's not able to serve with. I cannot even imagine in my mind well, how I would be handling it if I couldn't preach to y'all. I don't know what I would be doing to myself. Sister, sister Skin had to give me some drugs, probably. I, I'd just be all crazy, cuckoo, in my mind, you know. But I thank God again for this preacher, for all of the other pastors in Lake Charles and the like who are going through the same thing that he is experiencing. We're here to be a source of encouragement, to let him know we love them, we want to support them. And all we're going to say on the count of three, y'all know what to do, Good Shepherd. One, two, three. That, that was not good enough. Let's try that one more time. One, two, three. Preach, preacher. Come on, Cornelius. Preach to us the word of God. Amen. Receive him as he comes. I bring you greetings from the great city of Lake Charles, Louisiana. I am Hyena Happy Bamboo and Bliss to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Uh, before I probe into my text on this morning, I have to just give some acknowledgments. I want to thank the Good Shepherd Baptist Church and the mission uh, uh, ministry for everything that you guys have done for me and my family while we was here in Houston, Texas. I never thought in many years this would be a season of transition. Uh, oh, you guys may be seated. I'm sorry. Actually, Dr. Skinner and Good Shepherd, this is my first time speaking to an audience since in March. Because in March, uh, I was stricken with coronavirus. And I was in ICU for, uh, for about seven days, almost, almost died. And, but due to the help of the prayers of my church family and my immediate family, God raised me up from that ICU room. Amen. So that was, that was uh, test number one. Well, 
as you know, in, 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 in the month of August, uh, Hurricane Laura came and really devastated uh, our city. Then back though, I believe it was Hurricane uh, Delta finished uh, what Laura started. That taught me to never make no uh, no women angry. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> then <coughs> from that, um, God sent us back on this week to go back to Lake Charles. And I was sharing with uh, Dr. Skinner. My heart was bleeding because going back to the, the city, uh, it's devastated. Many churches, uh, many people, houses are, are destroyed. So I just rode around the city, just prayed around the city, and I just asked God to rebuild and restore that city. But my assignment this morning, guys, is to encourage Good Shepherd, the city of Houston, the youth and young adult, how to praise God in the midst of your pain. How to praise God in the midst of your pain. Okay. I want to use the A clause of Psalms 40, verse 3. Then we're going to look at Psalms 106, verse 1. This is the A clause of, of Psalms 40, verse 3. It reads, and he has put a new song in my mouth. Okay. Go to Psalms 106, verse 1. And it says, praise the Lord, give thanks unto the Lord, for what? He is good, for his mercy endured forever. My brothers and sisters, how to praise God in the midst of your pain? My brothers and sisters, I have to tell you, by God's providence, the year 2020 has been a year of discouragement, Distress, disappointment, delusional sometimes. But through it all, God is still able. We are in a season of transition, season of change. Many individuals who's here in this building and those who are watching on, on, online, you are in the season of struggle. The, seagull, the, uh, the season of stress, the season of sickness, or perhaps those who are watching, you have this experience, the season of sorrow. All of us are in different types of seasons right now. But Good Shepherd, guess what? I have discovered it's something about music. Music is the language of the soul. A saved soul has a new song to sing. Matter of fact, the soul, the song of a soul is a, a song of redemption, but also it's a song of salvation. My brothers and sisters, guess what? When you and I are privileged to come to Good Shepherd or whatever church that you guys belong to, watch this, you ought to have praise on your mind. Hey, it's been a long time since I preached. Uh, can I preach like I feel? You ought to have praise on your mind. Watch this. Uh, you and I ought to sing the new song with pleasure. Why? Because Psalms 100 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. So watch this. When you and I come to Good Shepherd, watch this. You and I ought to come with a shouting spirit. A serving spirit and also a singing spirit. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. So that means, watch this. I shouldn't have to wait until the praise team get me ready for worship. When I come to Good Shepherd Baptist Church, guess what? Praise on my mind. Can I have a witness here? That means when you and I hit that door, guess what? We ought to give God some praise. Why? Because when praises go up, uh, blessings come down. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. So watch this, watch this, watch this, uh, my brothers and sisters. Singing a new song is threefold. Watch this. You and I are to sing with your spirit. 
Because Paul says, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, of, of verse 15, I will sing with the Spirit, and I will also sing with understanding. Let me say it again. Paul says, when you and I come into corporate worship, watch this, you and I are to sing with our spirit. Can I have a witness here? Watch this. Not only that you and I are to sing with our spirit, but you and I are to sing with a smile. <laughs> I wish I had a witness here. Why? Because how you know, Pastor C, it says in Psalm 71, verse 23, my lips shall greatly rejoice. And I will sing unto thee, my soul, which thou hast redeemed. That means when I come to Good Shepherd, I'm singing with my spirit, but I'm also singing with a smile. Can I have a witness here? That's something. I always had a prayer in church here, y'all. That's something when you go on through, you still can smile. When you lost everything, you still can smile. When, well, I wish I had a prayer in church. It's something about when God is in you, whatever's in you has to show up on the outside. Can I have a witness here? I'm here to tell you God is worthy to be praised in the midst of our pain, in the midst of persecution. Can I have a witness? It's something about the glory of God. Watch this. You and I are to sing with our spirit. Sing with a smile. But Dr. Skinner... Psalms uh, 98 verse 4 tells me I ought to sing with a shout too. <laughs> Why? Because it says make a joyful noise to the Lord. All the earth make a loud noise and rejoicing and sing praises. Watch this. That means when you are in corporate worship, your praise ought to be loud. I said again, when you and I are engaged in corporate worship, your praise ought to be loud. Oh, I'm going to say it again. When you and I are in corporate worship, our praise ought to be loud. That means, guess what? When you are singing praises unto God, guess what? The whole Houston, Texas ought to hear your praise. Can I have a witness here? That's something about being in the presence of God. Oh, Pastor C, what's in the presence of God? I'm glad you asked, Claire. In his presence, that's power. In his presence, that's love. In his presence, that's joy. In his presence, that's forgiveness. So watch this. I want to be in the presence of God. Woo! Watch this, God. Woo! Sing your new song with pleasure. Sing your new song with praise. Watch this. In our context, the, uh, this, this was penned during the time David was running from King Saul. So watch this. David is speaking about the time of his life when he felt trapped in helplessness and hopelessness. So watch this, my brothers and sisters. When we sing uh, a new song with praise, it's a threefold. We got to praise God. For deliverance. Yes. We got to praise God for devotion. Yes, and we got to praise God for direction. <laughs> Let me go over. We got to praise God for deliverance. Yes. The, Pastor, see what you mean. Watch this. Because our Savior, Jesus Christ, watch this, suffered, bled, and died yes, for all of our sins. Watch this. He became the rock yes. and the hope of eternal salvation. <laughs> Let me say it again. I'm praising God for my deliverance. Why? Because Jesus took the penalty of sin, the punishment of hell for me. Can I have a witness here? That's why when I come to church, I'm giving God praise for Jesus. Why? Because he saved my soul. Oh, I always had a witness here, y'all. Watch this. When I come uh, to Good Shepherd or whatever church, I'm not coming to look at you. I'm coming to give God some praise. Can I have a Why? Because I'm praising him for his deliverance. Y'all, David was a praising man. Okay? Not only David was a praising man, but Dr. Skinner, David was a, 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 a proclamating man. That means, what you mean by proclamating? He is telling us about the experience of the grace of God. Oh, my brothers and sisters, when you turn to Psalms 100, verse 5, watch this. The psalmist tells us you and, all, you and I ought to praise God, number one, for his goodness. <laughs> oh, I, I wish I had a witness here. 
Watch this. Not only that you and I ought to praise him for his goodness, but you and I ought to praise him for his grace. Because it, said, it says his mercy should, uh, is everlasting. But watch this. Not only you and I ought to praise him for his goodness and his grace, but watch you and I ought to praise him for his guarantee. <laughs> What's his guarantee? His truth endured to all generations. I wish I had a witness here. In other words, my brothers and sisters, my children's children is covered under the blood. I wish I had a witness. Their children's children is covered under the blood. So watch this. When I come to Good Shepherd, I'm coming to get my praise on. And let me tell anybody up in here, up in here, up in here, stop play hating on my praise. Can I have a witness here? Why? Because you don't know what I've been through. So when I come to Good Shepherd Baptist Church, I'm going to get my praise on. I don't, it don't matter who's watching. Why? Because number one, I'm not praising for you. I'm praising for him. I wish I had a witness here. It's something about when praises go up, blessings come down. Woo! Praise him for his deliverance. Watch this. But you and I ought to praise him for a direction. Psalms 23 said, he leaded me. In other words, my brothers and sisters, as children of God, we got to ask God for divine directions. Oh, my brothers and sisters, guess what? I'm living it. I'm a living proof right now. I never thought in 2020 that I would have lost everything. But guess what? I'm asking God, and I'm leading and trusting in God for what? His divine direction. <laughs> Can I have a witness here? Why? Because guess what? I, my, my grandmother, who I never met, but I used to hear stories about this, said, she, she used to always say, God, God is a, it was a leading post. But well, guess what? I'm experiencing right now, through his grace and his mercy, God, you are my leading post. You and I ought to praise him for Deliverance, yes, we got to praise him for direction. Yes, but Dr. Skinner, you and I ought to praise him for devotion. 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 Psalms 5 tells us, watch this. It says, every Christian should start off their morning with devotion. Yeah. David tells us in Psalms 5, watch this. Watch the morning plea. He says, give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Watch this, my brothers and sisters. When you and I start your, uh, uh, your, uh, your day, you and I ought to have a desire to be heard, but also have a desire to be helped. <laughs> Watch this. Look at Psalms 5. Give ear to my words. Oh, Lord, consider my meditation. So I have a desire to be heard. That means God, even though you are spirit. But watch this. I'm going to use my anthropomorphic language. I'm going to put an ear on my situation. Watch this. God, in my, own, in my own personal pitfalls, my own personal pit experience, I need you to hear my words while I'm in meditation. And God, not only I have a desire to be heard, but God, watch this, I have a desire to be helped in my current situation. My brothers and sisters, guess what? This is how you and I ought to start our day. We ought to start our day with a morning plea. But watch this, not only with a morning plea, but a morning prayer. Oh, Psalms 5 verse 3. Here it goes. Watch the devotion. My voice shall you hear in the morning. Oh, uh-uh. Here's the punchline. Oh, Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee. Every Christian, every saint of God ought to have a morning plea, but ought to have morning prayer. <laughs> Can I have a witness here? So watch this. How do I begin my day? I begin my day talking to God. How do I end my day? I end my day talking to God. Can I have a witness here? In the midst of your pain, guess what? You still got to talk to God. Why? Because God has the power to deliver you. God has the power to sustain you. God has the I wish I had a praying church here. God has the power to pull you out of your own personal pit. Woo! Sing a new song with pleasure. Sing your new song with praise. Sing your new song with purpose. Watch this. It's threefold. When you guys are engaged in corporate worship, 
Number one is to exalt the Savior. Okay? Number two is to evangelize to the sinner. And number three is to edify the saints. <laughs> God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and truth. So watch this. When you engage in corporate worship, you are exalting the Savior. Oh, let me try this side. When you are engaged in corporate worship, what? You also exalt the Savior. Oh, let me try this side. When you are in corporate worship, watch, watch this. And you engage in corporate worship, you are to exalt the Savior. If I be lifted up, what, what? What's the manning? He will draw all men unto me. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, yeah. You exalt the Savior. But watch this. You evangelize to the sinners. Why? Because there's many folks that will come to Good Shepherd and all other churches that's open. There's bruised, broken, and discouraged. God is going to use you all as a praise team, as a church to help and heal the bruise and the broken. <laughs> oh, I wish I had a witness here. To exalt the Savior? Uh, to evangelize the sinner? Uh-oh. At the same time, to edify the saints. Oh, what you mean? That means when we come together at corporate worship, we ought to care uh, each other's burdens. Can I have a witness here? That means when Pastor Skinner's going through something, I'm going through something. When Chatsy Nick is going through something, I'm going. When you all are going through something, we all are going through something. Our job as saints, our job as Christians are to exalt and help each other in the time of our pain, in the time of our persecution, in the time of our discouragement, our time of distress. That's when the body of Christ ought to come together and lift each other up in prayer. to see. I saw you paint the picture about praise. But for those who are watching online, some of you got some questions. Psalms 106 is going to teach us and help us to answer your questions. Psalms 106 verse 1 teaches us to praise him now and forever. Watch this. One question that's popping up in your mind this morning. What motivates us to praise him? Psalm 57 verse 7. Watch this. A fixed heart. My heart is fixed, oh God. Whew. My heart is fixed, oh God. I will sing and praise thee. Even though I'm going through, even though you're going through, those who's watching online, even though you're going through, watch this. Your heart has to be fixed to praise God in the midst of your storm, in the midst of your sickness, in the midst of your sorrow. Guess what? You have to have a fixed heart to praise God. What motivates us to praise him? A fixed heart. How do we praise the Lord, Pastor C? Psalms 47, verse 1. Oh, clap your, your hands and shout. Watch this. Let me say it again. How do we praise him? Clap your hands and with a shout. Watch this. Six, uh, Psalm 63, verse 4 says, uh, it says, we ought to lift our hands in thy name. So watch this. We got to. Clap. We got to shout. But turn around, we got to lift our hands. <laughs> I wish I had a witness here. We got to clap. We got to shout. But turn around, we got to lift up our hands. Oh, let me say it again. We got to clap. We got to shout. We got to turn around, we got to lift up our hands. Can I have a witness here? I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, no matter what you're going through, God wants you to continue to clap. God wants you to continue to shout. 
but God wants you to lift up your holy hands. Why? Because guess what? God is allowing his glory to shine on your situation. Woo. Watch this, guys. What motivates us to praise him? A fixed heart. How do we do it, Pastor C? By clapping, shouting, and lifting hands. Pastor C, when do we praise God? Psalms 34, verse 1 say, I will bless the Lord all, at all times. Watch this. That means when my bills are paid, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless the Lord. When my bills not paid, I'm going to bless the Lord. When I'm healthy, I'm going to bless the Lord. When I'm sick, I'll bless the Lord. When I'm happy, I will bless the Lord. When I'm crying, I will bless the Lord. When I feel good, I'm going to bless the Lord. But guess what? When I feel bad, I will bless the Lord. Woo. Watch this. It says, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. But Psalms 113 verse 3 tells me, from the rising of the sun... Uh-uh. To going down of the, of the sink. Watch this. I will bless the Lord. Say it again. When I wake up and say, God, thank you for waking me up this morning. Watch this. In the daytime, on my lunch break, take a little small praise break. Okay? After you, you take a praise break, and just before you and I go to bed, watch this. God, I'm going to thank you for all that you've done for me on this day. Protect me on this day. Gave me traveling grace on this day. My family is fine on this day. So God, since you protect me on this day, guess what? I'm going to sleep in your arm on this day. Can I have a witness here? What motivates us to praise him? Fix heart. How do we praise him? By clapping, shouting, lifting hands. When do we praise him? All the time. Well, I got to close with this. Pastor C, where do we praise him? Well, according to Psalms 135, it says we ought to praise him in the midst of a congregation. <laughs> Let me say it again. Let me say it again. Psalms 135, verse 2 says, you and I ought to praise God uh, where? In the midst of a congregation. That means it says standing in the house of the Lord. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Watch this. Uh, where do we praise him? In the midst of a congregation. Watch this. What, we, uh, what you and I ought to be doing? Standing in the house of the Lord. I'm going to say it again. In the midst of a congregation. Standing in the house of the Lord. The Bible says where two or three gathered in his name. He says he's there in the midst of a congregation. But standing in the house of the Lord. Preach right now. I want to give God the praise. My brothers and sisters. Not only in the congregation. That you and I. Or to give God some praise. But we got to praise him before this, this, uh, before this dying world. We got to let this world know that Jesus is still alive. Jesus is still has the power to heal and deliver. Not only he has the power to heal and deliver. But Jesus had the power to save and set free. My brothers and sisters, guess what? I told you it's been a long time since I preached, guys. But I got to let my wing go now, guys. My brothers and sisters, I'm so glad that I'm in the presence of God. Because uh, in the, the presence of God... Uh, I have discovered uh, that's joy in the presence. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I,
I'm glad in the presence of God. I can feel his love. I wish I had a witness here, guys. If you know that God is still good today, why don't you stand on your feet and give God some praise? I'm glad he's still on the main line. And I can tell him what I want. Ain't you glad today? Can you say yeah? Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. I, I know he's all right. I know he's all right. You ought to praise God in the midst of your pain. Sing your new song with pleasure, with praise, and with purpose. The uh, Psalms 106 commands us to, uh, uh, to show our praise. By how? What motivates us? A fixed heart. Okay? When should we do it? All the time. Okay? Where should we do it? In the midst of a congregation. Or in the house of the Lord. I'm here to encourage every single person who's watching and those who are in the building. Why God allows us to go through pain is not to destroy us. When you and I go through pain, it's to develop us, to become matured Christians. My cousin, Reverend Bonjour Harvey said, he told me the, uh, on this week, he said, God, Williams is stretching you. Well, I want to encourage somebody who's in the same situation that I am. God is stretching us to see how far we're going to trust him. Can you trust God when you cannot trace him? I'll say it again. Can you trust God when you cannot trace him? May God bless you. May God keep you. It's my prayer. We, we have heard how to trust God even in the midst of our pain, brothers and sisters. Give God another hand praise again for the message and for the messenger. Pastor, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You, you reminded us directly from the word of God. This is God's expectation for us. No matter what we experience in life, his expectation is that we give him praise regardless of our circumstance and thank you again for reminding us of that so today if there is someone here today that might be living life a certain level of pain and you don't know what to do with it you don't know where to go with it uh, the preacher has shared with you the preacher has uh, given you a challenge within your own self to know that you got to go to God you got to go to God and the only way to get to God is through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So if there's someone listening today and you haven't trusted Jesus as your personal savior, you don't know him to be the Lord of your life. You've not trusted him as your sin bearer. I want to invite you today. We invite you today to trust him. You may ask the question, what do I need to do, Lee Skinner? You need to believe. You need to receive. And then you need to believe. What do you receive? You receive the word of God. By way of the Apostle Paul who says to us in 1 Corinthians 15, I deliver to you that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was risen from the dead according to the scriptures. He got up on the third day according to the scriptures. And the Bible says, if you believe that, you can be saved. And you may be asking the question, save from what? Well, the pastor reminded us that what we do, our praise is redemptive. 
our praise reminds us that we've been delivered from the slave market of sin that Jesus paid the necessary price to save you and I from an eternal damnation from eternal separation from God the Father and his love so today if you haven't trusted him right now is the time to do that because there's no doubt in life if you haven't experienced pain yet keep living but when you understand that that pain has a purpose when you understand that that pain is not designed uh, to cause you to give up but that pain is designed to help you to recognize the grace of God even more then again and only then can you give him the proper praise that he deserves so today if you haven't trusted him please do that maybe you're talking sitting next to someone that who knows Jesus as their Savior so you can talk to them and, and help them to explain to you what is it that Pastor Cornelius Williams was talking about as he talked about redemption and, and salvation and those kinds of things. Perhaps again, you may have questions about it. So you could call us at 713-672-9847 and we'll be glad to get back with you to maybe to answer any questions that you may have concerning the fact that it could be that Jesus saved you today. And we want to welcome you into the family of God, into the body of Christ. Father, how we love you again and thank you for your word. Thank you for your preacher. Thank you for reminding us how to praise you in the midst of our pain. How to give you glory when things don't appear to be as good as we would like them to be. How to say thank you when we're going through our trials. To the end, Lord, we pray that you will be glorified. Your church again will be edified and we pray again that someone who did not know you will be evangelized on this day. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we pray it all for his name's sake. And all who agree said amen, amen, amen. Come on, hand clap of praise one more time. Thank God for the preacher and for the preach word. It's offering time, brothers and sisters. It's offering time. Is offering time. Those of you who are giving by way of online giving, you know what to do. You've been doing it now for this is the 34th Sunday. The 34th Sunday that we've actually been gathering together in this way, in this form. And so I want to encourage you all by all means. Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? That's good. That's good. That's good. It's okay. It's okay. That's good. We want to encourage you all to continue your giving as you have been doing, Good Shepherd. We are definitely appreciative to God for the blessings that he continues to bestow on each and every one of us. And we can be very, very, very thankful for how he is, uh, how he's keeping us uh, in the midst of all that we're going through, in the midst of all that we are experiencing at this particular time. Deacons are ready to help you, those of you that are here. Again, don't forget, you can still call your deacon if you need somebody to pick you, pick up your money. Just give them a call and they'll be on the way uh, to get whatever it is that God has given you to be able to be a blessing and to be blessed uh, as a result of your giving. Father, how we love you and thank you again for every giver. We thank you for every gift. We pray now that it will be used for the ongoing of your kingdom, the magnifying of your name, and for the edifying of your church. For we pray all these things in the name of your son, who is Jesus, the very Christ of God. Amen. Let me do this before we, uh, we make our exit today. Again, I am so thankful again for Pastor uh, Cornelius Williams. And uh, man, you got through it. I'd have been crying all over the place by now. Just trying to get through the message. But God, thank God again for using you in the way that he has done. We've got our birthday recognitions, y'all. One power clap again for every person. Kiara LaFleur. Mary Wilts, Lyndia Jones, Paul Dunham, Barbara Johnson, Jaden Booker, Yvette Dunham. Come on, come on. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. Uh, on today, 12 years later, Rodney and Lena Ben. And of course, the old man and Doc, Christopher and Malika Anderson. Rodney and Lena are celebrating 12 years. Uh, Chris and Malika are celebrating two years. I know you're smiling, real. You got it, man. You deserve it. You deserve it. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I also want to do this, you all, to recognize um, those who have, uh, have served in the military on today. 
uh, this would probably be, be a little bit more formal in terms of, we know we got, we're, we're dealing with a different time. So I'm just gonna ask you to do this for me, to celebrate with us these persons, both women and men who have served in the military, who have, uh, in some cases, uh, gone to the military, some of those uh, things that they've done have not been long stints, but they, they did volunteer to be a part of it and the like. And so we want to, uh, to celebrate them today. Tyrone Stamps, uh, James Johnson, Richard Davis, Clarence Wiltz, Brian Edward, Kelly Jason, Jessalyn Dennis, uh, Dave Callahan, James Leonard, Otto Smith, Frank Smith, Linton Jason Jr., Greta Savannah, Trina Thomas, and pe two people who are currently serving, and those are the persons of Sharicia Thomas and Anthony Wilson. Let's give God a hand praise for them. We want to say thank you again for those of you who have chosen the route of military service and uh, done what you have done for our freedoms, the things that we enjoy today. Uh, we know it's a direct result of things that you all have done in your service as military personnel. And we do not take what you do lightly. We are so grateful to God uh, for your contributions that you all have made to allow us to enjoy the things that we enjoy on today. So congratulations to all of you and we pray in some way that um, uh, you are appreciated, if you will, by your church, by your family, and the like for those contributions that you all have made. Let's not forget our normal Wednesday Bible study on this particular week. We're asking everybody to be in, encouraged with that at 11.30 on Wednesday morning. It's going to be conference call only. And then at 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening uh, is going to be by way of Facebook and YouTube. And, of course, we've said it. For those of you on Wednesday that may want to come to the building, please feel free to do so. We're grateful to God this is the 34th week that we have met in this way and that no one yet has tested positive as a result of coming to the building. So we praise God for that. That is such a blessing. And so um, it says to us that... We're using the wisdom of science, what they're telling us to check. And I want to definitely appreciatively applaud Raymond Williams. Raymond is checking those temperatures every Sunday. He's here early representing the ushers and nurses in a major way. And so, man, thank you so much uh, for what you've been doing. Again, to Mike, to Zach, uh, those who've been helping again with our media ministry, thank you so much for your continued contribution. The band, thank you all so much, fellas. Thank you, Judy, again, for what you all continue to do. We love you so much for that. Listen, we're going to start our Sunday school at uh, 1020, and uh, we're going to go until 11 o'clock, or maybe about five minutes after 11 at the latest, and then we're going to move forward in what we're going to do for the rest of this day, and I pray that all of you will have a productive day. I will say this to everybody. Please engage in Bible study. 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 Uh, we've made those efforts to make sure that you have access to it. And so I'm saying that when Pastor Johnson and I stand before the Lord, we can be good conscious of knowing that even in the pandemic, we made it possible for you all to be, uh, have access to the word of God and the blood, as he would say, will not be required of us. But I am praying that all of you are engaging in Bible study. One last thing, um, through conversation again with Pastor Johnson and just prayer and, and checking him out and, 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 and paying attention to the life, the character uh, on the, uh, the 22nd of this month, we're going to actually ordain Reverend Sean Aguilar as a, a, a minister of the gospel, uh, an elder, if you would, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we're going to give you further direction on that. That'll be uh, the 22nd. That'll be in the afternoon. Sean is here for our Sunday school. So we give God again a hand praise for him. Uh, recognize that he is qualified if you would in that area. So we look forward to what God is going to do in and through him again. Pastor, thank you so much. Thank you so much, man, for blessing us on this day. We are very grateful and thankful to God. Let's stand as we get ready to make our exit from this place. On today, we already have. We already have. We already have. We already have. Yes, sir. Father, how we love you, how we bless you, how we praise you, how we thank you 
for your greatness, for your goodness, and for your kindness toward us. We thank you, God, for reminding us how to praise you even when we got pain. We thank you, God, that we saw it in the book of praise. We saw it in the Psalms that you gave us insight. You gave us command. You gave us what we need to do. Now, Lord, if we're too sorry to do it, we know the fault is not on you. The blame is not on you. It's got to be on us, Lord. So as we leave this place, help us to have a different view of what's going on and a different view of how we ought to handle life and how we ought to look at life. So, Lord, we praise you today that even though Doris Addison had to go through COVID-19, you've delivered her. And you allowed her to be back with her daughter and her son-in-law. We, we thank you that even though Clyde Berry's got cancer, he's still not giving up, Lord. He's still trusting you. He's still loving you. He's still praising you. So, Lord, we thank you for these demonstrations of showing us what to do when we're going through these tough times. We pray for Brother Jesse Coleman and ask you continue to deliver him through what he has gone through, Lord, for Richard Patterson, who had a major stroke, Lord, that I pray that you would allow him to be healed and that his mind would still be on you in the midst of all that he is going through. We pray for Sister Almira. We pray for Sister Philomena. We pray for Sister Paul. We pray again for Sister uh, Essie Chandler, Lord, who's getting older but still loving you, still telling us, tell the Good Shepherd family, I love each and every one of them. God, we thank you for their life. We thank you for their legacy. We thank you that even though they got pain, they're still giving you praise. God, we pray again that as we continue to move forward, thank you for what you've done in giving us, in you choosing the president that you wanted us to have. We thank you, God, still for the president that we do have. And we pray, God, as we continue to move forward, you would help us to do the very thing you said to do, is to pray for those who are in authority so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all reverence. God, we still honor the king regardless of who that person may be, whether it's a man, whether it's a woman. We still honor the king because that's what you have commanded us to do. Now, Lord, to you who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think, you alone was the only wise God who's got dominion and power. You got it now, and as the preacher said, you will have it forever. So, Lord, we'll make sure we give you the praise when we're up or down, when we're in or out, when we have or we don't have. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray, and all who agree said amen, amen, and amen. God bless you all. Until we meet again, Sean is going to be leading us Facebook by way of Sunday school. Sister Skinner's on the conference call for our women. The rest of us know what we need to do at our different times for the Zoom calls and the like. God bless you all until we meet again. Bye-bye.